I just wish to uh, talk about the, we got the police on your agenda tonight. And uh, I'm a 60 year resident of this town. And I think of all the years that I've lived here at the, the park, police have done a great job. I live near Collin Park. And a couple of years ago, we, as you, everyone in here knows, that there was a rash of uh, vandalism in the parks in Four Colonies Park, they had vandalism out there in the park. I called your office and they were really receptive. The park police came out and did their investigation and so forth. So I just hope tonight that you will consider keeping the park police. I um, I fully support them and um, uh, Please give it uh, considerable thought. Thank you. Thank you. John O'Hara. John O'Hara, just a couple of comments in favor of the park police, and I've been at most of the meetings. Uh, uh, everything we talked about, you know, I don't want to be redundant, but you know, the embedded culture of public safety and public safety and crime prevention. Uh, and now that we know, having attended the last meeting, that there's not much money to save doing it any other way, just you know, the, introducing the perspective to the board that the only opportunity is to make things worse, is to screw it up. So doing nothing, leaving it the way it is, having all the positive benefits uh, with money being neutral, um, just encouraging the commission to think about it in that way. Thanks. Thank you. Diane Miller. Good evening, everyone. My name is Diane Miller. I live across the lake. From what I heard at the committee the whole meeting, I believe you will most likely decide to keep the Park District uh, Police Department. And that's okay. But I think we need to talk about a few things. First, it's been said by this board that the knowledge Chief Wongo has of the parks in Crystal Lake is invaluable. I want to remind everyone that he started only five years ago. At one point, he knew nothing about our parks. 
he should be sharing that information with the other officers and also with all of you. Because at some point, he's going to retire and that information should retire with him. When I spoke at the last committee to hold meeting, I reminded you of the numerous problems we've had dealing with the Park District Police. There was the road soccer coach that uh, took Chief Horngo three weeks to remove from Lippo Park, the landscaper who illegally dumped uh, landscape debris in Lippo Park, the driver who drove on the trail behind our home and nearly hit me. Another example of a problem behind our home in Lippo Park were fireworks, which caused a huge blaze in the wetlands in 2021. People regularly remove native black wildflowers by the root. Some carry them by the armful and put them in, in huge piles in their cars. We didn't used to have all these problems in the full park for one reason. The park district police have not done regular daily patrols on the trails in the full park. Those staff when Chief Longo joined the force in 2019. I think this happened because the policing style of the previous park district chief was different from that of Chief Longo. The previous chief understood the importance of community policing. That means to patrol every single day and get to know the people in the areas you patrol. The residents are the eyes and ears in the parks. Not tapping into that resource of information is negligent. Because of other problems in our neighborhood, I've had many sit downs with the officials in the city of Crystal Lake. Chief Black of uh, the Crystal Lake Police Department was in those meetings. We always thought that the Crystal Lake uh, Police patrolled our neighborhood on a regular basis. Chief Black told me that's not the case. There are no regular patrols. There is no community policing. Officers are dispatched to areas when they're needed. That has created many problems in our neighborhood that continue to this day. With a park police force that is supposed to be dedicated to safety in our parks, I believe the regular patrols need to be reinstated. Chief Longo may tell you they do regular patrols, but I'm telling you they don't. If they did, we would see them. We are home all day. That should be a daily drive or walkthrough of each and every park, not just the parking lots, um, but every trail. Regular duties for the park police need to be decided by this board. Patrolling all the parks and assisting people in the parks should be priority. I understand the need on occasion to help other agencies, but that time shouldn't take away from their regular duties. Running radar and or writing speeding tickets should not be on that list. That's a job for the Crystal Lake Police. The park reports are informative but lack specifics. I would suggest the calls for service section include the name of the park and not just the address. That way we know where they're going. Expanding on the problem section would be helpful too. Outside assist police doesn't explain that. Lastly, I'm requesting a sit down with Chief Wando, Officer O'Hara, and a representative from the board. I don't care which one. No one has ever followed up on the issues we brought up. I would also like to discuss the patrol from the whole park. If you're going to keep the park police, we all need to work together to make sure they're doing what is needed to keep our park safe. Thank you. Thank you. Bob? <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I've lived in Crystal Lake for more than 33 years. The Park Board has a responsibility to use our tax dollars wisely. $250,000 to $400,000 will be budgeted in the next year for the Park Police if they are retained. It's a lot of money. I know there was a comparison to how many tennis courts that eat. Tennis courts are physical materials and they last many years. We're talking about an annual expense in the park district budget that will likely increase year after year. It is already doubling this year. The park board and park district employees have a warm and fuzzy feeling for the park district police, but most citizens don't know they even exist. The park board is very aware of that fact. At the last meeting, there was a recommendation from a board member to promote the park police on the park district website. Why is that necessary? If the park district police are really doing their jobs and being seen and interacting with the citizens in our parks, there'd be no, need, no reason or need to promote the park police on the park district's website. Their presence and proactivity should be sufficient public relations. The Crystal Lake Park Police Force should be reorganized. 
There needs to be some accountability for the park police. The park district has the ability to track all their vehicles with GPS. The park district police vehicle tracking with GPS should be mandatory. Park police should be spending 80 to 90% of their time in our parks. The park police should not be policing traffic or chasing ambulances. Please stop using retired police officers to run the park police department. I have several friends who are retired municipal police officers, just like Chief Longo. And I don't know if Chief O'Hare is retired, but they have nice pensions from their previous employment and they're already collecting those pensions while working full time doing police work and getting extra income and another pension. In this situation, the park district is paying two full time salaries for two employees who are likely already retired officers, and you're giving them generous benefits as well. They're just padding their retirements with additional income and pension money. These make these senior officers on the park district police force part time officers. As part time officers, they can still be mentors and help the new park police force that can draw from their experience. We need and deserve a full-time force that will be around for a while, not one that's already retired and on its way out. The park district needs to stop using the ancient patronage system model and work on retaining younger officers by making them full-time police officers. If at all possible, you should hire a Crystal Lake Park District resident to serve as the new chief. When needed, that chief can respond faster than a half an hour or more that it takes Chief Longo to reach Crystal Lake from his Lake Zurich home. Residents of the Crystal Lake Park District spend their time here. Their families live here, and Crystal Lake residents spend a lot of their free time and their money here. They even use our parks. A younger park police chief who lives in this area and is a resident of the Crystal Lake Park District won't just be, be coming to their job to cash in. With a full salary and decent benefits, younger full-time officers will have a career and a vested interest in our parks. They can use the skills learned from old and new policing techniques. New full-time officers can use every opportunity they, they have to be seen, to meet the citizens who are using our parks and to build relationships. We deserve a better dedicated and committed police force. One that will be around for 10, 20, even 30 or more years. That investment in the future of our park police will make citizen taxpayer dollars effective for many years. That's an investment that can last longer than a tennis court. Lastly, the park police are a big portion of the park district budget. Why isn't the park police department present at park board meetings or at meetings of the whole? Every other department is represented at park meetings. The park police do not attend park district meetings. The only park, po the park police only submit written reports to meetings. Those written reports are never mentioned or discussed. I only see the park district police officers at park district meetings when they're here pleading with you to preserve their jobs. Why is that? Because you make them feel warm and fuzzy or because they make you feel warm and fuzzy? No, the average citizen taxpayer doesn't know the park police even exist. How about making us citizen taxpayers feel warm and fuzzy? Use our tax dollars wisely. Please, if you vote to retain the park board, give us an effective park police force that's accountable and worthy of funding with our hard earned tax money. Thank you. Okay, nobody else put a yes here to talk. Does anybody else want to talk? I will. <laughs> I have a short written statement uh, in favor of the, uh, in, in keeping the really? park police. My name is Arturo. Arturo Diaz. Yes, sir. You live at the, uh, you're in Crystal Lake? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, so to, uh, to start, uh, I just want to thank those that have uh, supported the police force. And I wanted to remind everybody else of, of uh, one thing. That it is a, uh, as, as the park district, it's your responsibility um, to keep the park users safe in, in your parks. And it is not the city of Crystal Lakes, McHenry County, or any other agency's responsibility. Um, it, it comes with the understanding that the park police will be there if you need them. Because again, we're within the jurisdiction of the Crystal Lake Park District. 
the answer that is being thrown out there of a private security firm to be able to take over these duties just doesn't seem doable. There is, there, there's so many responsibilities and so many things that are done by the park district police officers that are unseen, they're unheard of because you can't measure a lot of their, their efforts in the way that we expect things to, to be measured. Their mere presence deters, it, it speaks volumes, it, it deters the ill intent of a lot of different um, people. It, it brings about a calm. It ensures that if I need something, there is somebody here that is familiar with the park and my issue. I don't think the private security firm is going to be able to understand and know the parks and these trails. They don't have the connectivity to it. They don't have the connection to it. It is it is a private security firm who is contracted to be here. And already there is less of a tie than these officers have with the staff, with the public, with this community, and with these parks. And so it's it's concerning that this conversation has gone on this far. And I, I hope that from all of the discussions that I've had, it seems as though they will be, that they will be kept. And, and hopefully that, that does remain in place um, because the, the bonds that are built with those specific officers, with the community and these members, again, that, that speaks volumes. Uh, and, and so I hope that as a taxpayer, as somebody that utilizes these parks, as somebody that has two young nieces that takes them to these parks, we're able to, to keep a, a key part of what makes these parks and these parks what they are, and that is the, the Crystal Lake Park District Police. Anybody else? Okay. All right, so um so um I submitted an application for the municipal board for our parking because we breathe and live green for our community and we were uh, honored to receive the award by the sustainability committee. So they would like to present an award to us. On the behalf of the City of Crystal Lake Sustainability Committee, we would like to present you the green business designation. So we have a nice big decal for you guys to display. Um, we are so glad that you guys are leaders in sustainability. And um, thank you for all the sustainable practice that you're doing. And we're just excited to see where you're going to go from here. So we, they'd like, uh, we'd like to do a photo op uh, to have for our social media, if that's okay. Could we get the board members to kind of... Gather in the middle, perhaps. Here. And um, um, uh, 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 we'll do like this. Yes, How about we go? Yeah. Well, I, I, I miss you. Yes, but I have a feeling we're going to have to just kind of stand it right well, there. <laughs> Behind the table or in front of In front of this. Oh, wow. I mean, in front of this. No, it's okay. It's just clear. And then they have to own rent. They can't hold it. Oh. You may have to stand up. Oh. 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 Yep. No, I mean, you should you? Did it get disconnected? You want to come in here? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Okay. Check the coin. I see a red light. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Thank you. Anything? All right, so let's move on to uh, the big issue: Park District Police Review. 
Anybody want to share their thoughts? My favorite are keeping the police force. I think um, budget wise, it's clear that there's not uh, motivating reasons, um, financial reasons to eliminate them. I think that we can't evaluate their effectiveness in terms of how many calls. Perhaps it's better to look at how few calls we have, and we don't really have a viable alternative. And for the health of our community, health and well-being, I would like us to keep the food supply. I would just like to say, based on my anecdotal being part of the park district for about 25 years in the capacity of a beach manager, I feel really strongly about how the park police does the job. And if we, we decided at the last meeting that if we need to look at the practices and inspect them a little bit more rig, rig, uh, rigorously, that's what we'll need to do. But I think uh, I think a lot more people in the public probably recognize that the park police does that, you know, offer value for, for a park district. And um, I just can't, I think it was said before that, you know, we can only really maybe make the situation worse if we decide to get those Can I jump back in? I would like us to be able to see a standalone budget for the police department every year going forward so we can track what is being spent responsibly. Yeah, and I think that would be a concern that we could address. So, go ahead. Anything else? You guys have heard what I have to say, and it's the same, and I am absolutely not in favor of disbanding the park police. And I'm for me too. I mean, my vote has not changed. I definitely don't want to disagree with them. Advisory referendum choice, you know, on, on the voter side. Well, I, uh, I, I'm disappointed at the analysis. I think we just got uh, we got no pros for disbanding. We just got cons. That's all we got. So I feel like we didn't get the information that we we, didn't, we weren't trusted to, to have this information teed up for us. Um, disbanding the police department means no police patrol. I don't know why we're even talking about substituting patrol. That was never the issue. The patrol we get will be from the city or the village. So I think that was another more proof that we're just trying to make the case for it. we got to keep it, right? That's how it felt to me. Um, so there would be no private security other than what we have to, just like any other place, right? at events and such, not for patrol. Um, so, you know, I, I'm always on the, the purposes I got on the board. I'm trying to reduce expenses, trying to reduce taxes. You know, we try to save our money, and you know, if they print more money, it becomes less valuable, right? And so you think, well, real estate's good to have, but you know, if you start to feel like you're just paying rent to the county treasurer, then your real estate's not really safe either. So we're in, we've got some control of the value of people's property, and if we just keep loading on redundant services, and, and they do a lot of good work, I'm sure of it. You have a ton of anecdotal evidence that makes you feel good, but it's not. It's not real analysis where it's redundancy. So uh, for me, what's the term, Scott? Race it's, it's a little bit, right? The thing speaks for itself super loudly. And the fact that we have to have all of this argument against it even makes it louder to me. So um, I think they do good work. And I think they're good people. We just don't need an artist or police force. So, so that's where I am. I think I'm the only one that would make this motion. It's at the left. I read in the material that was at the last meeting, but somebody wants to make a motion. And so we can close this down. So anybody can make it. You can make a motion. You don't have to book the paper. But I'll, I'll make it if nobody else wants to. I may. I move that um, we keep the Crystal Lake Park Police in its current form. Okay. No, I will second that. that. Okay. Any further discussion? Okay, let's have a roll call. Mr. Cagle? Yes. Mr. Heisler? No. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Mathias? Mr. McHale? Yes. Mr. Anderson? No. Okay. So the motion carried. We're moving on. Ending up on that on that issue.
All right, so this is about on the consent agenda. Thanks everybody for coming to give us your thoughts. Can we get a motion to approve the consent agenda? I'll make a motion. Second. 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 Any discussion? Yes. 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 Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Courtney Moore. I am one of the audit principals at Water Rock Newman, and I'm here to present the April 30th, 2023 audited financial statements. Before I get started, I did want to say a huge thank you to Tina for all of her help in getting everything pulled together for the audit. It does take a lot of extra work outside of the scope of her regular job duties to not only prepare for the audit, but to also help bring it to its final form. So, Tina, thank you so much for your help. Thank you. The Crystal Lake Park District is a part of the Government Finance Officers Association Certificate of Achievement Program. This is a very prestigious award that is only given to a handful of local government municipalities, park districts throughout the government, uh, throughout the United States. Um, the Crystal Lake Park District did receive this prestigious award at April 30th, 2022, which a copy of it is in the front of the audit report. Congratulations on receiving it once again, since this is very prestigious and there are not a lot of uh, other park districts that have received this. Um, and we did apply to receive this for 2023, and uh, it is our goal that we will uh, help mm -hmm. achieve that certificate again in 2023. <clears throat> the purpose of an audit is for us to perform various tests and procedures on your financial statements to ultimately form an opinion. We did give the park district an unmodified opinion. It is also known as a clean opinion. It is the highest opinion that we can give. It states that the financial statements are presented fairly in all material respects, and we can rely on the internal control environment of the organization. Additionally, in our SAS 114 letter, which is our required communication to those charged with governance, we note that we do not have any difficulties or disagreements with management throughout the audit process. I did want to touch on a few key financial highlights for the year. Your financial statements start on page 29 of the physical bound copy that you have in front of you with your statement of that position. Overall, the park district did end with a total net position of about $38 million. Of that total, about $31 million is your net investment in capital assets. So these are all the assets that the park district owns, less related accumulated depreciation, and any debt that was taken out. Can you, um, can you tell us when the, so when the capital assets, what were they valued? The valuation of each of your capital assets would have come on any time you purchased the asset. So, so if it's a valuation of Lippo, it's a... 1974 yep. evaluation. So, which doesn't show us it's it's how you do it, but it doesn't show us what it's. Well, I mean, you can always get a capital asset appraisal if that's something that you're interested in. If we could, I'm just saying this, our, our net is much greater than this, like that's real estate expenses. That's possible. With the total 38 of your net position, um, a handful of that is restricted for your special levy items. So you'll see those listed. Those are your specific property tax levies um, that are restricted for specific use. And the remaining 5.2 is unrestricted to meet the future needs of the park district. Overall, this net position was an increase from last year, about $1.9 million. And you'll see that on your statement of activities on page 31. The fund financial statements start on page 33, and this is essentially how you plan your funding. Right there. So that in that position, that's just we we took in about two million dollars more than we spent this year. So. Correct. Yep. So that 1.9 is an increase from last year to this year. Yep. Uh, with the fund financial statements on page 33, this is essentially how you operate and how your budget is set up because you do budget by your specific fund. Um, so I always like to point out the general fund since this is the main operating fund of the park district. That ending fund balance this year was about $4 million. 
And you'll see that that is also split between non-spendable, assigned, and unassigned to meet the future needs of the park district. The income statement for those funds start on page 37, and you'll see all the revenues and expenses related to that. So we went a decrease of about $399,000 in that fund balance this year. Past the financial statements, we have the notes to the financial statements, which really explain everything and anything you may need to know. And it's really kind of the new bones of the, the audit reports. Um, and past that, we have required supplementary information, including statistical information that is required to be disclosed for that uh, certificate of achievement award that I discussed earlier. The other bound document that is required to come out of our audit is something called the management letter. These are our recommendations of any potential policies, procedures, or anything else that may have come up during the audit process. The only current recommendations we have this year are related to new GASB pronouncements. So GASB is essentially the governing board for the way your financial statements are required to be shown. And from time to time, they come out with new pronouncements to make sure the financial statements are easily readable by an external user. Um, so these are just some FYI comments, uh, just so that you know that we are aware that these pronouncements are coming out and we will work with the park district to get them implemented when required. There were two prior year recommendations and I wanted to mention that the status has been updated to implement it and they will not be repeated. One of them was a GASB pronouncement and the other one was due to your record club fund um, not being in compliance with your fund balance policy. Uh, but this is now corrected and that comment will not be repeated in the future. So with all that being said, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. I know this found document is very large and there is a lot in it, but I uh, wanted to open up the floor if anybody had any questions. Can you explain the meaning of the change in the pension liability and IMRF in the system? Yep, so if you can turn to page 69. Yep, so this shows your 10 year trend of your IMRF. So, Essentially, what the net pension liability is calculating is the total amount that the park district will have to pay in order to make your IMRF pensions full. So each individual that has a pension through the IMRF, whatever the expectation is with all these additional actuarial calculations, this is the amount that the park district would owe. So you're probably noticing from last year to this year, it was an asset and now it is a liability. And a lot of this is due to market changes and fluctuation in interest rates. Um, additionally, the Park District did make a couple of accelerated payments on some of these IMRF pension plans. Um, so you'll see that the benefit payments did increase this year. And the other piece that I always like to point out is the net investment income has changed drastically from the year prior. Uh, this is pretty, very typical. We saw this with many Park Districts and even villages over the last year. So the negative has to do with one, the our, our increased liability, the, the pensions we're going to have to pay off, pay out, and the market doing poorly. Yeah, so it started with an asset. It went. It, the standard amount is typically a liability because that's what you owe on the pension liability. And the reason why it changed to an asset was because the market was doing so well in the 2021, 2022-ish timeline. Um, and now that we're kind of trending back into a normal direction, it's moving from an asset to a liability. Anything else? So we're looking good. Yes. <laughs> Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I guess we should be. We need to do this, but does someone want to make a motion to uh, accept the report? Yeah, I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So as we've talked about previously, we're having some issues with the current system that's used to access the boat launches. Um, so Eric and uh, Ann have been looking into some options for us to replace what's there, and that was in front of these So I'll let Eric give it a quick explanation. I'm sure. Sure. The question that way. So the, the memo just simply states it's pretty simple. Sometimes the boat gates work. Sometimes they yeah, get the gets sold there, and you can ghost is helping. Sometimes, sometimes not. Right, and, and, and obviously for residents, it can be very, very frustrating. Um, that's one of the main 
focuses and trying to update that software for that system. Um, you see the quote for you. Um, I'm not going to attach the memo there. Uh, this should be a very nice system. Definitely uh, a step up. Um, and this is at West End? West End. And yes. And now, while the biggest difference and the biggest benefit we're going to see is obviously consistently working, but it's going to be a key fob system. So just a key, it'll attach to your key. House keys are a Versus the scan, which we come to find out that can be kind of, you know, people can take a picture of the scanner, you know, kind of do what they want with it, different things like that. So, so definitely be more high tech, uh, more secure, and uh, should benefit everyone that uses that more launch. Well, I'll go to the system and we decide down the road when we want to key our buildings in this manner. The system is also available for doors and other uses, so it can be universal throughout the district. Decide to that policy. I have a question. Can we use it on the fisherman's gate? We do not currently. We're not set up that way. We but, still use the lock. And, but eventually you could if you want. Absolutely. We're we having a problem with that gate not closing? And... The gate gets checked there, you know, periodically and it closes, and now it has, you know, breaks. Now, if there's snow or something like that, we'll get a piles of snow. And we can check. Yep. Hey, uh, would somebody like to approve the issue of screen system for the book and launch gate update? I have a motion to approve it. Second. Second, yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. World Spike Round and Resilience. Dr. Fay? Yes, please. Yes. So, very excited to share with you that we came under budget for the Sorrel Park uh, playground surfacing. The, uh, we had a bid opening um, in January. We received one, uh, one envelope, and so we held it. We uh, contacted the submitter, and they said we pulled it. So then we had a new opening yesterday, and we received one more. And the base bids were uh, $62,066.100. $1,350 respectively by Perfect Turf and Team Real with the alternate ad one and two posed. Um, the alternates one is for, so we the goal is to provide artificial turf surfacing on top of the existing rubber surfacing, but they have to do some repair work. But before we wanna, before we install the artificial turf surfacing, we wanna test it to make sure we're compliant because it's, uh, it's aged over time. It does degrade uh, through sun and weather conditions. So we'll test it first. And if it doesn't meet uh, standards, we will have to accept alternate A or want one, which is what I'm proposing, the full amount of base bid plus alternate one to cover ourselves. Uh, but if we don't have to do that additional mitigation for surface uh, attenuation, then we'll just keep with the base bid. That's my goal, but we don't know. I'd rather plan for a little worse and, and have a better situation. Uh, most important is our children are safe. So I'm asking for approval of $127,386 for the Squirrel Park Playground Surfacing Project. Alternate two was to do port and play surfacing. So that would you know jump it up a bit and we would be over budget because alternate two for Team Rail would be approximately 180. 2000 and then for perfect turf would be 160 some odd thousand dollars. So I recommend uh, continuing with the artificial turf. All right, so I move that we accept the most responsible response bid for replacement of the squirrel. Certainly, who is that? Responsible bidder, uh, perfect turf. I'll second that. Discussion to roll call. Mr. Jacobson? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. McHale? Yes. Mr. Cato? Yes. Mr. Heisler? Yes. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Thank you very much. Yes. Yes. All I have is I will be off next Monday through Friday. Back in the office on Monday. Thank you. I uh, just wanted to remind everybody to fill out their economic interest. 
the email went out, I believe, on February 1st. Um, so they didn't say, so can you guys just let me know if you did or didn't receive it? You did, you did, you did, you did. Okay, did you get it? Okay. Because they were having trouble with their emails. Uh, some people getting them, some people not. So I just wanted to report back to them that everybody got everybody in our staff. Got. Okay. Um, I think that was it. Thank you for the approval of the audit. And the budget's coming up. And the budget, yes, is coming up on the uh, 22nd, next Thursday. We'll have it out for you. Um, and then the two weeks later will be the um, Committee of the Whole. Which is the Whole. Yeah. So you have it to us in a couple weeks. We'll have it to you on Thursday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just want to share some good news about our summer camp. Uh, our summer camp guide went live one week ago today. We no longer mail out the full camp guide. It is digital only. It went online. We told everybody it was going to go online at 830. It went online about seven. And before we had even opened our official doors, we had 12 people that had put their kids in all day, every day throughout the entire summer. Um, we have 807 registrations so far. We have some weeks of camp that are already sold out. Uh, we have our other camp that is very popular is our Alice in Wonderland Theater Camp. That has 32 of 40 spots filled. Um, so within this first week, we are seeing crazy numbers like we did not expect. We knew it was going to be a busy summer, but right away it's already been kind of surpassing some of those expectations. As part of that summer camp guide, we do have three new teen specific programs. We have a middle school dance camp, we have a sailing camp, and we have our lake leisure camp. So those are all up online and are able to be registered now. Um, so it's been a great first week. One thing to keep in mind that as Tina mentioned with the budget coming out, we have also been flooded with inclusion requests for those people that are looking for one-on-one -on -one aid or special assistance for their children. So the budget number that you'll be getting next week is significantly higher than we have had in the past. Um, yes. Um, and, and so I think it's a, we've had a number of people come to us even just in the past couple of days and say, your camp is so great. We don't necessarily want to be with NISRA. We want to try to see if we can make it work with you guys. And Sam, who's in charge of our camps, is amazing at trying to give these kids the best experience that they can. We can't always meet it, but we do everything that we can. We've had a lot of surplus in handicap. Special records. Well, yeah, call it special records. I think part of it might have been projects that were scheduled to be completed and they might not have gotten all this over the years. What, mm -hmm. Long before, when I was on board the first time, mm -hmm. so, that's a good use. But just in general, we're, we're beyond thrilled so far with the first week of registration and just excited and a little scared about what the summer is going to bring us. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I think summer's here next week. We'll yeah. yeah. We're thrilled about the weather. And that. <laughs> uh, you know, Natural Resources has been doing a lot of work around the, the area. I think people have noticed and it's going very well. And we have been lucky this year with the lack of, you know, Pops winners, so it's really all I had. Thank you. Thank you. Amy? Um, no, not much for my board report. Just for this <laughs> Thank you very much for the story. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to say how thrilled I was to hear that the city is going to do something about the community crossing. I, I'm just so excited. What are they going to do? You know, so they're going to be, so just to give a reference, so the Ashton Point subdivision by the Finger Grove Plantation, there's Oak Hollows Park behind the folks residents were asking us to put a park there to find where sort of across the street that they're going to cross the Finger. So we've mentioned it to the city. I'm sure some of those residents have reached out to the city as well. What they're going to do is they're going to move the crosswalk walk from where it currently is further north, so on the other side of where that street comes out, and then they're going to eliminate the when you turn when you're driving west and you turn to go north on Pingree, there's kind of a turn lane you go into and then you end up in the lane. They're going to eliminate that lane to make the crossing shorter, 
So the distance across the street will be less. So people will be able to get across the right. and weaken it a little bit more aggressively. And that's the plan. So I was very appreciative that they listened to what we had to say and what this resident one part was to say. That was wonderful. Thank you. Um, and I'm excited about your tour of the Boys and Girls Club. Um, I think particularly the team programming, whether or not Boys and Girls opens up a facility here or not, Hopefully you can bring some of those ideas back to staff. So that was exciting. Um, <laughs> I've never seen as many well-received um, posts by Park District on Facebook as I have in these last two months, particularly talking about uh, restoration things. Um, it's just been wonderful to see all of that. So nice work by staff. Um, it was great to read that uh, our quiet staff seems to be coming back or signing up to come back. I know that's always uh, a concern, so that was really wonderful to read. Um, I was, it's not our fault, I was disappointed to read that the patch picked up the daughter date night and daddy daughter night. I don't know if you guys saw that. We've been trying to make it, whoever wants to go with the little girl, have fun. It was very daddy daughter night, is what they call it. So that was a bummer to read. Um, I don't know what we can do when we're talking to the patch to make sure that it's more inclusive. That would be nice if we can pull it off. Um, and then this is, I missed last meeting. I'm sorry about that. But we talked a little bit, the meeting before that, about um, staff benefits. And right now, staff can have a 20% benefit. And Tina was looking into what other park districts were doing, thinking about um, summer camp and daycare and you know child care things that had been free benefits for staff before that now they're not allowed to get as a tax because of what we felt were the tax rules. And I guess I wanted us to consider that Benefits because you have kids maybe shouldn't. I mean, we have different tiers in health insurance for with kids or not without kids. And I wouldn't like us to have unlimited camp and before and after school care for families of employees who have kids because I don't think that's for employees who don't have kids. Um, so we are going to offer larger benefits. I'm like, there be a to think of us to think about having a cap on it, like free benefits up to four hundred dollars, and then after that you pay, you know, the eighty percent or something like that. Because otherwise, I think it's not an equal benefit for all employees. Um, that's it. Oh, I know. I didn't tell you all about IAP, and I, I can't not tell you about it. This was my favorite thing. I understand it didn't make it to the budget, but you guys, we can put in ice skate rinks really. Importantly, and I spent at least an hour talking to this company. We can put in a 40 by 60 refrigerated rink that will allow outdoor skating for three to four months for $76,000, and it costs approximately $200 a month to run. We could we could put two in, you know, and then we could put another one in. We could bring ice skating, winter sports, um, so undependable. There's so little we can count on doing, and they super chill the ice, so it, it stays harder. And it's not when snow falls, it doesn't hit it. It doesn't require a zamboni. It's easy for staff to take care of. I, I really, I'm going to hand this over to Jason, but I really strongly believe this would be a huge benefit to our community. Why do you think it would go? But your pardon? Where do you, where do you envision it going? Doable, real. You know, I mean, aware. put it in places with parking. For a while, I thought it would be great to go in the park across that the crosswalk is going in. It's called. Oh, wow. Yeah, because people could park at Penny Green Station and walk underneath and go skating right there. It would be pretty fun. I don't really care where it is. Staff would be better at figuring out location than me. But I'd love to bring ice skating on these nice, small, family oriented things. Has anybody been to the one in McHenry? They just opened one. I have not. Right, right near, somewhere near the river walk. I didn't get, I didn't get to it. I wanted to go. Yeah. 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 I think it's a great idea. Yeah, I did too. 
Mm -hmm. A lot of kids don't get the opportunity to skate because the beach isn't always reliable. And, right. Yeah. And, and 7600 $76,000 isn't a ton of money. No. You know, and you can, I'm sure we could get sponsorship for these, you know? I think it would be wonderful. Um, and then I spent a lot of time talking with the uh, roller skate rink people. Um, and that idea that I met at what got introduced to at National about roller skating being multi generational. Guy was like, Yeah, I'm 50. I go on, when I go skate, I'm with all the young ones and we all skate together. And he had ideas, they have official ideas on how to um, help the community understand that roller rings are not for delinquents, that they're a great way to keep our teens engaged in the whole community and bring the little ones out and get the 40 and 50 year olds involved. So I passed the material off to Amy, but I was really excited about it. And I hope you look at it as a board some more. And then I brought a program idea, Kurt, you were coming a little later and I handed it off to um, Amy as well. It, uh, it was a gentleman who had outdoor movie screens, but his entry idea to get in the door was a game idea, like a trivia game idea for senior citizens. It's super cheap at three hundred and fifty dollars for like a three hour event and it looks a like gaming, you know. It it looks super fun. Yeah. And I'd like to have staff look at that. Um and then I went to a basically a green workshop by the um the Chicago uh, come on, I'm sorry for forgetting my words. Um Conservation District, I think that was it, about how the whole, the board and the whole staff came up with a 10 year plan for going green and what that meant and hiring outside consultants from um, Champaign Urbana to come in and design a, an ecologically responsible plan for the organization and how they looked at where to put solar and where to put in heat pumps and how to, you know, how as an organization to track them, to know where you are to start and to track progress to a mutually agreed upon goal. And I think we have to move in that direction. We have to we have to take a stand and, and do something. And um, so I will bring in more information to the next time. And that's it. Thank you. Sorry to take so long. Glad you didn't get anything out of the conference. <laughs> <laughs> it was it was I thought the programming for the conference was weird. They like made everything for board members only on Saturday, and everyone wants to go home on Saturday. Um, but the things I found were well. Yes. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, can we get a, a motion to the executive session and the process of reviewing the executive session minutes? Would we go into executive session? Well, for the purpose of moving. Yes. Yeah, we have to work on that. You just have to recording. <laughs>